Hello everybody! So in this video I will show to you some really interesting zinc based battery because one hour ago I found some patent about this zinc based battery uh, and I was thinking that this uh, battery looks really really uh, interesting and actually I need to try to make one so why is this battery so interesting to me because it's zinc based and also uh, the cell voltage is 2 volts which is really really nice so the battery chemistry is some thin zinc battery so in the patent I see that positive electrode is made from thin uh, thin rod and the negative uh, electrode is made from zinc and the electrolyte which was used in this patent was some ammonium hydroxide and actually the cell produced 2 volts so I was interested to make uh, such a cell but uh, clearly I don't have any ammonium hydroxide and this was the problem and I also don't have any tin rod so I need to improvise so the cell which I have here uh, have the same concept but uh, have a little bit different cell design because for the positive uh, current collector I use some graphite plate uh, instead of tin I use some tin oxide because in the patent says that uh, when the battery is charged uh, the, on the positive electrode will form some tin oxide so actually I can go with tin oxide directly with no problem uh, like I said uh, current collector for the positive electrode is some graphite plate then I have some tin oxide uh, for the positive active material uh, and on the negative I have some zinc the electrolyte which I use in this one I use some two more of zinc sulfate so actually I wet the separator with two more of zinc sulfate and on the top on this I add also three mole of ammonium chloride two to three drops and yeah so in basic this cell is quite new for me and I also play with this cell for I don't know one hour something like this so I don't know uh, what is the capacity of this cell or how many cycles this one have and so on because when I first make some prototype cell uh, then I discharge with this motor uh, that I can repeat several cycles to see if the cell is stable or not and so on and then I charge the battery with some electronic load to see the capacity and so on so right now uh, this one uh, is yeah quite fully charged I will disconnect my power supply and I will show you the voltage Two volts. <laughs> really nice. Really nice. So, uh, in the patent, I see that some thin zinc battery you need to charge with 4.5 volts to get two volts of uh, cell voltage. I charge this cell with 2.2 volts because charging voltage of uh, 4.5 volts uh, is a little bit high uh, but I'm really happy that I can get a cell voltage of 2 volts with charging voltage of 2.2 volts and also what is really interesting here I have uh, this multimeter set on 10 amps uh, 
this cell produce uh, one amp and it's so tiny cell and can produce one amp with no problem at all Okay, something is wrong. Oh. Yeah. Some connection problems. Really awesome. So actually, like I said, I play with this cell for about one hour, and I try different electrolytes. Uh, I also choose uh, a little bit different setups of uh, active materials and so on. So at this stage, I try some electrolytes to see which electrolytes will fit into uh, such a cell like this. And uh, first they try with potassium hydroxide. With potassium hydroxide in this cell, I get the voltage of 1.5 volts. So it's way lower, uh, like the cell in the patent. Uh, and the potassium hydroxide, I mean the cell with potassium hydroxide, uh, don't even spin this motor. So potassium hydroxide is, was no go. Uh, for the second electrolyte, I use only zinc sulfate. Uh, the zinc sulfate was a little bit better. Uh, with zinc sulfate, I get the voltage of 1.7 volts, and I was able, I mean, the cell was able to run this motor for 10 seconds, which is really nice. So, in basic, I get a little bit of improvement. Then I make the third electrolyte, the third electrolyte was made from uh, two mole of zinc sulfate and several drops of uh, ammonium chloride. And in this stage, I get 1.9 volts, and uh, the motor spins for about 30 seconds, something like this. And that's it about the electrolytes for now because I get really nice improvement. So like you know already, I'm really big fan to make battery prototypes uh, which have uh, active materials without any binders. And the first in oxide zinc battery prototype was also made uh, without any binder. So actually I use some uh, tin oxide uh, with uh, activated carbon. Uh, the weight ratio was 3 to 1. Uh, 3 grams of tin oxide and 1 gram of activated carbon. And I get something like this. I mean, I also add the electrolyte to get something like this. So, this, what I have here, is some active material uh, which I used before. So with this setup, I still get the voltage of 1.9 volts. Uh, and the power output was around 200 milliamps. But right now, this one, the output uh, is one amp. And clearly this one have way, way better capacity. Like the tin oxide zinc cell, uh, which don't use any binder because right now in this cell I have some binder but uh, this binder which is in this one uh, is not some normal binder 
like PVA or uh, something similar. Uh, the binder which I use in this cell is my new water-based conductive ink. So actually I will make some review about this ink also. But actually what I used for the binder was this. This conductive ink. And only with adding the conductive ink uh, for the binder I improve uh, the power output from 200 milliamps to 1 amp and also the capacity is two times three times better like before so if I repeat myself one more time uh, the positive current collector is made from graphite plate uh, the active material which I use is some tin oxide with uh, activated carbon in weight ratio of 3 to 1 uh, and for the binder I use this conductive ink uh, the separator is some uh, toilet paper uh, and the negative electrode is made from zinc uh, the electrolyte which I use in this one is some 2 mole of zinc sulfate I just wet the separator and on the top uh, I add 2 to 3 drops of 3 mol of uh, ammonium chloride and that's it so one more time two point volt yeah two volts two volts two point zero three volts this is awesome enough testing for today and guys we see us in the next video Bye.